Now, let's move to today's perspective. And it's often said that Africa is the continent that pollutes the planet the least, and yet it is one of the world's most vulnerable to climate risks. Well, as temperatures climb higher and water levels rise, the dramatic changes to come could be devastating, of course. My guest today is a man who's a business expert, something you might think might not go hand in hand with the problem. But in fact, the reverse is true. Let's find out more then. We're going to speak to uh, Kenneth Hameshi. He's a professor of sustainable finance and governance at the School of uh, Transitional Governance at the European University uh, Institute in Florence. He also works at the University of Edinburgh, the London School of Economics and the University of Cape Town in South Africa. Thanks very much for joining us on the programme today. So first of all, I mean business, but sustainable business. That's what it's all about for you, isn't it? Can they really go hand in hand, though? Uh, good morning. I mean, of course, yes, uh, business and uh, sustainability can go hand in hand. Um, uh, and here we are talking about how the private sector in particular can align with the sustainable development goals. And there are opportunities for, for businesses as well as risks to manage. So um, the new trend now is the combination of the two. So it's not one or the other. We need businesses that are willing to also cooperate and collaborate to achieve the sustainable development goals. I mean, is is not all business or nearly all business, though, uh, you know, almost counterproductive to the environment? Yeah, but another one way to look at it is to think about sustainability as impact management, right? So every business creates an impact, both positive and negative. And these impacts can be understood from different perspectives. So it might be environmental impact. So when we talk about climate change or uh, um, transition finance and climate finance, it's all about the environmental, environment related impacts. But you, businesses can also create social impact. Think about impacts on human rights, think about impacts on, on jobs, uh, impacts on consumers. So these are social issues. Then there are also governance issues that businesses might have impact on. So depending on how you look at it, every business creates impact. So this impact can be positive or negative. So the essence of sustainability then is to reduce our negative impacts and enhance our positive impact as we create value. Businesses create profit, create value. The how of it is basically what the sustainability agenda is all about. And is it possible to answer the question, how do you actually do that? Or does it depend on each individual business? Um, it depends on each individual business, of course, but there, there are fundamentals. So businesses create profit, right? So in the process of creating profit, they need inputs, for example. And those inputs can, say, for example, if, if you're a, a technology firm, you need raw materials. So where do you get your raw materials from? So if you are a fast moving consumer good uh, company, you also need inputs. Where do you get them from? So the whole thing about value chain will come into place. How you also relate with your communities, where you do business, as well as other stakeholders will, will then matter. So every business has its own uniqueness, but the uniqueness also is a function of the stakeholders that the company uh, impacts on. How much do you think all of this is in the minds, not just of individual companies, but also in also entire countries, really, in Africa? I mean, there are an awful lot of emerging economies, developing economies. Is the environment in their minds enough where you think it should be? Um, if you present it as climate change, the way we, we position it, there's what I may call mental distance. So some of these countries have that mental distance from the problem. So but for countries that are experiencing... Uh, climate change impact, they tend to understand it more because of that, what we call mental proximity. Um, but the companies also in some of the emerging markets are grappling with fundamental social problems. Think about poverty, think about health issues, poor education, and other infrastructural challenges, which make it then um, easy for them to deprioritize um, uh, climate change and because they also want to address the fundamental human challenges they're going through. So, uh, and, and some people might argue, say, for example, look at China. I, I use that example a lot when I speak to African countries. And they will say one thing, you know, China was able to lift uh, 500 million uh, out of poverty following the Millennium Development Goals. And today, China has a lot of uh, environmental challenges and you know, issues like smog and, and others. But they point to it and say, well, that's a good problem to have. Let's solve our, our social problems first and then manage the environmental problems later. But that is a false choice and a false dichotomy because it can actually 
do well today as well, and, and then avoid the problems, uh, the environmental challenges being presented. So the good thing about some of these emerging markets is that they have a clean slate to operate from. So instead of making the mistakes of uh, developed economies, they can start afresh and really create, be, be the leaders in, in the sort of uh, agenda we are talking about here. And I know you're fighting specifically for all those agendas. I mean, you've, uh, you're, you're part of this uh, foundation of Africa capitalism. Tell us about that. Yeah, Africa capitalism um, is a concept uh, developed by a Nigerian businessman, um, Mr. Tony Elumelu. And the notion there is that Afri um, Af capitalism comes in different forms. So the capitalism in, in, in Europe is different from the capitalism in America. It's also different from the capitalism in China and, and Japan. So the question here is, how then do we understand the place of business in society? How can the private sector be part of the solution? And that's the notion of Afri capitalism, the private sector leading the way, contributing to development, uh, especially in emerging markets uh, or, or countries like you may find in many African, African countries. And the good thing is that when you talk about sustainable development, the way we talk about it in the global north, which is all about climate change and, and environmental issues, um, some of these emerging country, uh, countries or emerging economies tend to distance themselves from it. But when I present African capitalism in the African context, it's about working for ourselves, taking charge of our destiny. And people understand it differently because these impacts can as well be localized. So imagine a company that is prioritizing uh, local development, rural development, and what they do, and also creating value for the different stakeholders. So African capitalism is another way of talking about sustainability, but in a way that makes it closer to people so they see it as they are working for themselves and not necessarily doing something because of external influences or uh, agenda set outside the, their continent. Good to end on a nice optimistic tone. Thanks very much for joining us on the programme. Uh, Kenneth Ameshi, uh, Professor of Sustainable Finance and Governance at the School of Transitional Governance at the uh, European uh, University Institute in Florence. Thanks very much. The main headlines.